football. It brings us together and calls us back every weekend. IDA, South Florida, South Florida. To paint our faces and to leave it all on the field. It's more than a hobby or a game we play and watch. For us, football is a community, an opportunity, and an education. It's a way of life, especially here in South Florida. Home of the Bulls, the herd, and a family of green and gold. From those who have been with us since the beginning, who have laid the foundation, and given everything to the program. Breaking tackles, fighting for the end zone. To those who have just raised their horns for the first time. It took all to get us here, where dreams and expectations are within reach. Defining our own legacy under the national spotlight. The future of USF football has already begun, and this is only the beginning. Barnett throws, he's got Salomon, touchdown USF! And the Bulls have it! The Bulls force a turnover! Where does strength come from? The Bulls knock off a power five team in your a city, for the second your home, or is it where you are going? And this is going for a touchdown, six for the Bulls. All the work and effort that brought you here to the moments that define you. Strength isn't about what you can do. It's about what can be accomplished as a team. A family pushing each other toward greatness to define their own legacy for a new era on the Bay. This is Bulls country. Bull strong inside USF football. Two claps in the rim, two claps in the rim, blue. Woo! We got a lot of speed. A lot of speed comes out of Florida. Extremely fast. We can all play with anybody in this country. With anybody in the country. We're hungry. We have a chip on our shoulder. And we continue to go out there and fight each and every day. Hey, what's wrong with being the underdog? No matter what it takes, we, we're just gonna try to win. That's what we're gonna come out there and do and just show the world. We can run with anybody. So now it's just a start, but we're gonna keep it going. It's time to you know put the lights on and, and start the show. Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Coca-Cola. Hooters. Tampa General Hospital, USF Health, Coco Strong is a phenomenal individual. You know, take all the football and coaching out of it and just analyze and evaluate him as a person. He's a great person. You know, and I think our young men need that. A role model, somebody who does it the right way. You know, somebody who really cares about, you know, their academics, you know, their graduation, you know, their life after football. I think it, it's a, a great asset to this university. And I think the sky's the limit for where the program can go under Coach Strong's leadership. South Florida, the expectations are conference championship and the right to compete for a national championship. This is the American Conference, the one group five conference that everyone talks about that has the potential for a champion. Bulls fans on their feet here at Raymond James Stadium. This has got that feel tonight here in Tampa, doesn't it? Yeah, from a schematic standpoint, uh, be very similar. We're going to adapt and adjust our personnel 
you know, we're going to run the ball downhill. We're going to be fast. We're going to be a lot of fun to watch, put points on the board. The style of offense we run is physical. The style of defense we run is physical. So everything we do in all aspects, we're going to be, we're going to be not only physically tough, but mentally tough with it. And, and speed, I mean, we, 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 we've got some speed on the field. We've got receivers that can fly. We've got running backs. We recruited speed, and that's something that uh, we've got to be known for and always maintain. People don't realize how young this football program is compared to, you know, places where they've had football, college football for 180, you know, years, whatever it is. And when you're sitting right around the 20-year mark, I mean, it just, what it provides is an opportunity for growth. As we've recruited really well, we're in a state that has a lot of great high school football players. So as long as we can continue to get those young men into our program, I don't think we'll skip a beat. And I've always said the most important part of any organization is the acquisition of talent. And when you go out and you recruit well, you know, now you create a competitive environment because no one's irreplaceable. And I think that's when you look at that running back room. We got a lot of super talented backs that know if they don't bring their A game, that there's another player in that room that's just as talented that'll take that spot. And as a coach, you love to have that kind of environment and atmosphere. <laughs> First thing he has got to do, find a replacement for Quentin Flowers, his all-everything quarterback, and they're looking to the transfer, Blake Barnett. Who is Blake Barnett was the big question for this offense, and I think we found out potentially who he has the ability to be. So Blake Barnett, uh, obviously a highly talented, you know, kid coming out of high school, won the Elite 11, you know, been at a couple different schools and nice here, you know, at the University of South Florida. So what we've had an opportunity is get the absolute best out of Blake, and that's what we're getting right now. I want to go undefeated. I know the team does as well. Um, my goals are, are minuscule in, in reference to this team. I think that's the biggest thing is, is getting wins for this team. Um, individual success in this sport comes from team success. So just try to do everything that I can get to uh, contribute to this team. I think one of the biggest uh, characteristics of this offense um, is definitely competition. And I think that's what helps improve our receivers and our running backs on a daily basis. Cause you know, they go, they go out every day to practice even in season right now and they're still competing. You know, they, they're, they're competing for their time. And I think that's elevating everyone's game. And you can see when, you know, when the time comes that they're all ready to play. He's really, you know, put himself and ingrained himself in our football team. They've welcomed him uh, with open arms, and he's a guy that has, you know, has dove in as a leader, and he's got that moxie quarterback stuff about him. Uh, you can see that right now, and we're just really excited about him and the direction he's going as well. Yeah, I think if you uh, if you probably pulled the nation right now, a lot of the teams uh, in the nation wouldn't want to play teams from the American. You know, they, we've got a lot of talented players. There's a lot of good coaches that, that know how to recruit, that know how to do it, and we have exciting offenses. You know, we play tough physical defense in this conference. Yeah, it's a tough conference. I mean, I, I think we get overlooked a lot of the times just because of where we're at. People don't realize that week in, week out in this conference, I mean, anybody can win, but you're playing quality people all the way across the board. You know, I just think as long as we keep putting a great product out there and we keep winning games against those other conference teams, then eventually they'll recognize, you know, how quality of a product this is. You know, it's exciting. Our kids work as hard as anybody else in the country. We got a great product. We put a great product on the field, an exciting brand of football that we play both offensively and defensively. And we do, we want to embrace the, the Tampa Bay community and we want those people to embrace us as well. Come out, support us, and most importantly, come, come support our kids. We've really focused on, on, on preaching and hitting hard on, on doing the little things right. And, you know, we're, we know we're going to be a talented football team year in and year out, but when you find and play teams that, that you match up, uh, you know, pretty evenly across the board, it's going to be those little things. And I think that development in there, uh, you know, that's where we see the change as guys that know the, the, the finite details of what we want to have done and guys are, you know, guys can start correcting each other. And then when you see guy, coach, you know, players coaching other players, that's when you really see that, that level of execution step up. I think coming here, the biggest thing was just being able to prove myself, not only to the coaches, but the team. Um, I realized that there would probably be some uh, 
skeptical thoughts with me entering here, and it's completely understandable. But you know, just being able to prove myself and the, the conditioning and the workouts um, in the film room, on the practice field, just everything every day, just trying to prove myself to this team. And uh, I think that was my biggest goal in coming here when, when trying to you know, be a part of the Brotherhood. This segment of Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Tampa General Hospital. Woody the Bull is probably little to do with the fact that South Florida had won 17 of their last 20 games at Raymond James Stadium. Then again, you can't be too sure, so why mess with tradition? South Florida, South Florida, go! There's an old cliche in football that says you improve most from game one to game two, and the South Florida Bulls would live up to that. They were more than ready to take a step forward after their opening win over Elon. They would put on a show for a national TV audience that the fans in South Florida are lucky enough to see in person every week. While USF may be the relative new kids on the block, they were amped up with old school attitude for a visit from the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets of the ACC. First meeting between these two programs, Georgia Tech has been around for 126 years, South Florida for 22. But Charlie Strong's team was focused only on the present and making their own history. Barnett announced as the starter 10 days ago after Charlie Strong pulled every member of his defensive staff first. First run of the game belongs to Jordan Cronkreit. The transfer from Florida picks up 14, his first carry as a bull. One thing good teams can do is overcome adversity. It can strike at any time during a game or between games. And the Bulls faced some in the first minute when Blake Barnett was intercepted. The swarming Yellow Jackets had the ball at their own 43, but defensive coordinator Brian Jean-Marie leads a disciplined group that does not panic. They dug in and settled everything down. Swallowed up. Charlie Strong's defense rock solid. Georgia Tech would take the early lead with a field goal in a game that would feature nine lead changes. And the first happened on the very next play as a former Florida high school state track champion showed some freshman this lightning. He's going to come to Horn again, heading toward the sideline. Be careful, makes the catch at the two, stays in bounds, makes a nice move into the secondary. Here he goes, Terrence Horn. Horn is another homegrown Florida product. He was the state 100 meter champion at Miramar High School. And he looked good in the 98 yard event carrying a football as well. Electrifying the Ray J crowd and putting the Bulls ahead seven to three. But Georgia Tech would bite back. Counter play here. Marshall with a good cutback. And Taquan Marshall to the edge towards the pylon. And he is in for a touchdown. The first Georgia Tech lead lasted 12 seconds. Their second lead lasted 14 seconds, as once again, the Bulls would take the game by the horn. Kickoff comes down to Terrence Horn once again at the two yard line, and he's got open field again. 25, 30, 35, 40. There goes Terrence Horn again. Track speed down the sideline. He's done it again. Touchdown, Bulls. You have got to be kidding me. All kidding aside, Horn tied an NCAA record with his second kickoff return touchdown, setting school and conference records. He was on his way to being named the American Conference Special Teams Player of the Week. Over the top, Clinton Lynch. Who loves some points? This was a shootout in the sun, although things grew more defensive in the second quarter. And he will get shut down. Colin McGee moving from safety to linebacker late last season. Good catch made by Mitchell Wilcox for a first down. Excellent tight end. The Bulls were on the move again. Blake Barnett headed to the conference honor roll for the second straight week using his arm and legs to move the green and gold. Barnett out of the pocket with a shifty maneuver. Has the first down inside the Georgia Tech 40 yard line. Picks up 13, Q. After 31 first quarter points went on the board combined, South Florida got the only score of the second quarter. Darnell Solomon gets to the end zone. Barnett with another touchdown pass. First offensive points for the Bulls today. Talked about 
the size of these receivers. He's 6'3", 215. They've got great speed. And he's just too quick for an inexperienced secondary. Football is about adjustments, and after Georgia Tech scored in their first three possessions, the Bulls' defense slammed the door. Marshall hit from behind by Kevin Kegler. Kegler's first sack of the season and the second of his career came on fourth down, stopping yet another Yellow Jacket threat. They would have one more chance to try to grab the lead back from the Bulls before halftime. Marshall looking deep, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Ronnie Hoggins. Sixth career interception. Hoggins also led the Bulls with 10 tackles. Tech grabbed the lead in the third quarter. Again, the Bulls answered quickly, although not with a kick return. There is Bell, straight up the gut. First career touchdown for Duran Bell. The sixth lead change of the afternoon made it 28-24 South Florida, and the two sides kept swinging like boxers looking for a knockout blow. Oliver hit hard, Ronnie Hoggins. It looked like Tech might have that knockout punch when they scored the next two touchdowns but there was no quit in the stands or on the field despite the Bulls trailing by 10. Quick throw to the outside for Horde. Touchdown, Terrence Horde. How about this from the freshman, his third score of the day. With time dwindling and Georgia Tech threatening again, the Bulls refused to lose attitude, produced a huge turnover. Third and three. Toss play. Lost the football! South Florida's got it! Nico Sotel on top of it! The Bulls force a turnover. Nico Sotel fell on it. Bulls football. Barnett keeps. Has it only! Bulls take the lead! Blake Barnett puts him in front! Down by 10 in the fourth quarter, the Bulls had now grabbed the four-point lead in front of an ecstatic sea of green and gold. Now it was up to the defense. Was there any doubt? That ball fluttering, intercepted! Nico Sotel with another big play for the Bulls defense. Linebacker Nico Sautel led a clutch defense with two fourth quarter turnovers that led to three unanswered South Florida touchdowns. Second interception of the day. Barnett. Exclamation point, Blake Barnett. Barnett's touchdown sealed a win over Georgia Tech in the first ever game between the two, but it was South Florida's fourth straight win against a Power Five conference team. Another win for the Bulls, baby. This is what we do. That is what they do. 23 and four over the last three seasons. So good, baby. South Florida, baby. Best place to be at. Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Coca-Cola, Hooters, Tampa General Hospital, USF Health. You know, Horn, unbelievable speed. If he can get to the edge on you, He's going to take the ball to distance, and they're not going to catch him. Makes a nice move into the secondary. Here he goes, Terrence Hart. He's one of those guys that has a lot of time, a lot of speed, and gaining more confidence as he grows. Kickoff comes down to Terrence Horn once again at the two-yard line, and he's got open field again, 25-30. And there goes Terrence Horn again. Track speed down the sideline. He's done it again. You have got to be kidding me. The Bull Strong Inside USF Football Post Game Report is brought to you by USF Health. It was a uh, really good game, and 
I told him with this morning pregame speech, I said to him, I said, this game is going to be about mental toughness. We knew this, just to watch our team battle from 10 down in the fourth quarter. And it's going to be assignment football on defense. Marshall hit from behind by Kevin Kegler. And I said, offensively, we're going to have to be patient. We're going to be able to drive the ball. But if we're patient, we'll be able to make the run. Hand off, fell right up the middle, untouched into the end zone. That's six for the Bulls, Duran Bell. We're going to get our throws. Blake will be able to make the throws, and we will outlast. I said, that's some key thing is uh, at the end of the day, we just got to have one more point than what they have. Touchdown, USF! You look at some of the individual efforts, and to watch Blake go out and just battle, and you can see him. He can run around. He can throw the ball. And then if he needs to use his speed to move the chains, uh, he can do that. Look at McCants, the way he played. Barnett throws to McCants on the screen, and he's got the first down. A group that doesn't get the recognition that they deserve from the offensive line. You know, I told Atterbury, I told Mays, and I told Norman, if you three guys play well, then we're going to win this football game. Because those are the older guys that are the leaders of that, really the leaders of the offense who doesn't really say much, but just by the way they go out and play. It was good to get Bell back. It was really good to get Cronkite back. Now Blake Barnett and the Bulls take over. And Jordan Cronkite with a good run. The Florida Gator transfer in his first game with the Bulls picks up 11 yards there. So we, we have us a really uh, unique group there on offense. And then defensively, you know, Sautel making a fun recovery. Then also the interception. Intercepted, Nico Sautel. McGee having a, a lot of tackles. And we knew that was going to be the scheme because we was trying to keep McGee freed up so he can go and chase the ball inside out. And then for Hoggins to, to make that tackle where he got bent back and then laid there and then get bounced back up. And he said, I, they're not going to keep me out, Coach, and for him to come back. You know, that's why I say this team has it, got a uh, unique bond to it right now. You can tell um, from the whole line of the receivers to the running backs and tight ends, you know, that we were ready. That we knew what we had to do, and we did it. And that shows, you know, the country, like, you know, we're here. You know, we lost a lot of guys last year, but, you know, we still have a lot of guys here. And um, I think um, it's waking up a couple, you know, people around the country, and um, that's just what we live for. We live to, you know, big-time players make big-time plays. So, you know, in the, in the heat of the moment, you just got to go out and, and make plays. That's why I say this team just knows how to battle, and we just got to keep it together and, and guys not get full of themselves, and there's no telling what we could do here. How long can you celebrate this win? Oh, man, 24 hours in his own Illinois. <laughs>